going to continue Abraham and Sarah's story and how God has given us his promises as heirs in Christ. So God has promised us through Abraham's seed that he will continue to bless nations. And so when you think about nations, think about even how Jesus had to come through Abraham's lineage. And so because we are adopted as sons and daughters into the kingdom of God, we are essentially heirs of Abraham. Yeah, the Bible calls it grafted in. And when, when Jesus came to die for the sins of the world, that opened up the door for us to be adopted as sons. And so it's so great how God is so meticulous in how he does everything. You know, I think sometimes people think God just puts stuff together, but God is so meticulous. He puts everything together so that it works out and so that it's like understandable. And so God blessed the world through Abraham. And because Abraham believed God, it was counted on him to righteousness. And so it's just so awesome how God gave this promise to Abraham and that promise still lives for us today. And it's just beautiful to see God keep his word. And just how, even when we think about the lineage of Abraham, how they were called Jesus, the son of David. And so, and that's because Jesus was also from the tribe of Judah in the sense of came through the lineage of King David. And that's why he's the son of David. And so even in scripture, when they would say, they would call out to Jesus, son of David, this is because of the prophecy that was made about him and that he was going to be the Messiah, and that he was going to come from David. It's so amazing how purposeful God is through all the details in people's lives. He really is, and I just think it's an amazing God. We can never just con comprehend the wisdom of God, and how he literally can just take a billion different details and bring them all together to accomplish the purpose that he's had for us. It really is a beautiful thing when you learn to trust in him and by faith receive his son, Jesus, and become more like him when we continue in our faith. Yeah, I mean, there's so much to consider even in this time of Christmas when we think about um, this baby being born into the world and I think sometimes we get caught up in the aspect of him being a baby, but we should get more, we should get more into the fact of God forethought of bringing his answer to our sin problem that we have. Yeah, because even though he was born, he was still raised, right? And even until his 30s, and then that is where he died in order to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit so we can become part of God's kingdom. Yeah. It's such an amazing thing because of his virgin birth that was able to happen because he had to be born of a virgin because the spirit that lived inside of him was from God. So he was fully human, but yet God. Yeah, it's really amazing. And that's one thing, if you could figure out God, then he wouldn't be God. And so there are some things that are supernatural about uh, this virgin birth. And it's just so amazing how a lot of this started with Abraham. You know, when God first called Abraham to leave his people, to go to a land where God would show him. And it was sort of like that was really the beginning of a, of a birth of a nation, of an inheritance to God, which would be Israel. And then through that, God was set up the throne of King David. And then what, one of the things God said is that the throne of King David will always stand. And I think when we, when we think of that, we, we think about it in humanly terms, but God is talking about it in spiritual terms. You know, Jesus is going to have a real kingdom, a spiritual and physical kingdom here in the millennial kingdom. And since he comes as the son of David, he is that final king that will always be eternal seated on the throne. I love that. 
And as you were thinking, I was thinking about that seed of Abraham, right? Like God wants to birth something inside of yes. each one of us. Right. And it's through that seed that we need to continue to nurture, water, tend to, in order for it to grow. So what calling, what purpose, what desire do you have in your heart that needs to be flourished, that needs to be watered, that needs to be nurtured for it to grow so God can perform his miracle in your life? Well, when you were saying that, I thought about also to the word of God. Like, like we get the word of God in seed form that God wants to grow. That he wants to grow what he already put inside of us. You know, we wonder why so many um, awesome men and women of God how do they know the Word of God? How do they live that out in their lives? Well, they've allowed the Word of God to flourish in their lives, to grow up in their lives, so they can grow up to spiritual maturity. And many times, you know, we see a person who's been a believer for decades, but we see no fruit in their life, we see no change in their life. See, the deposit of, of the Word of God and the Spirit of God came in seed form, and they have not taken the responsibility of growing that up. And when we continue to abide in the word, we are abiding in Jesus, which allows us to completely mature in him and become the fullness of Christ that he says we can obtain. Yeah. And that's what's so amazing about God as well, because he, he has a purpose for every one of us. Like he thought of us and he goes, yes, I'm going to make that woman. Yes, I'm going to make that man. And I just think when we really submit to the, to the Lordship and authority of Jesus Christ and allow God's word to continue to grow us up to spiritual maturity, there's nothing that we can accomplish and do uh, in this life that God has given us. And so even think about in your marriage as well, God had put you both specifically together for a purpose, for a reason, all of your flaws, all of your strengths, all of your weaknesses align perfectly and meshed in order to seek God in that. Yeah. But just like when you talk about Abraham, you know, Sarah had a really important part in that process as well. Uh, and, and so it's just amazing. The marital covenant of what God created is a power source for God to continue the blessings and things that he wants to do in us. Because what I love about marriage is, is that it changes us. You know, I was just talking to, to you recently and I was just telling you how I see how I've changed over, over the years that we've been married. I see how you've changed. And so I know that a lot of those changes probably wouldn't have happened if I wasn't married to you. And likewise. <laughs> and it's not going to be easy. And it's going to be iron sharpening that iron because it's those little twerks that God wants to work out within us in order to strengthen us in our walk with Him. Yeah. And it's really about having a kingdom perspective. I think so much of too often people are so consumed with how they feel how they think what they want what they don't have instead of saying what is God showing me what is God how does God want me to look at this situation or what is God saying to me about it and I think when we and that's part of the submitting part that we're talking about because I think it's you know it's so easy for us to look at look at our spouse and see what's wrong with them and see the problems that they're causing instead of saying God show me me how, what, what am I doing wrong? How can I grow to be uh, to support my spouse better? How can I serve them better? How can I love them better? And I just really think, especially when I think of the fruit of the Spirit, to me, when you can think about those and grow in those, like long-suffering, like patience, like kindness, like when you can grow in the fruit of the Spirit, it just blesses your marriage more than you ever know. And so allow this time for God to really minister to you and start meditating on his word because he can allow those things to grow within your life as well.